In Activity 9, Properties of Gases, students learn that although they cannot see air, air is all around them. Students first experiment with air and describe its properties, and then infer the properties of gases in general. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 9, Paper Bags, Plastic Bottle, Bottle of Red Food Coloring, Plastic Funnel, and Plastic Spoon. You will also need to provide Describing Properties Chart, a piece of clay, felt tip marker, one sheet of tissue paper, paper towels, a sharpened pencil, a pitcher, and tap water. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 9 for each student. Fill a pitcher with water, add a few drops of red food coloring, and stir with a plastic spoon. You'll need the following materials for a class demonstration. A plastic bottle, a piece of clay, a funnel, some paper towels, a sheet of tissue paper, a sharpened pencil, and a pitcher of colored water. Each team of two will need a paper bag. Before the activity, you may want to practice wrapping the clay around the mouth of the bottle and funnel to get a tight seal. To begin the activity, ask students, does air have color? Can we see air? Students should understand that air is colorless and cannot be seen. Then ask, how do we know that air exists if we cannot see it? Students may mention wind and the fact that we can feel wind and see wind when it blows things, such as when the wind blows branches or leaves. Point out to the class that wind is moving air. Next, tell students that you're going to demonstrate that even though air can't be seen, it is all around us. Put the funnel in the mouth of the plastic bottle. Point to the pitcher and ask students, what do you think will happen when I pour this water into this funnel? Consider student responses, then pour some water into the funnel. Students should observe that the water flowed through the funnel into the bottle. Remove the funnel and pour the water back into the pitcher. Then dry the mouth of the bottle and the outside of the funnel with a paper towel. Replace the funnel in the mouth of the bottle and place clay around the funnel to tightly seal it to the mouth of the bottle, making sure there are no air holes in the clay. Then hold up the pitcher of colored water and ask, now what do you think will happen when I pour the water into the funnel? Listen to students' predictions. Next. Quickly pour the water into the funnel and continue adding water until the water stops flowing through the funnel. Students should observe that the water started to flow through the funnel and then stopped. Point out to the class that the bottle appears empty and should have ample room for more water. Ask students, why isn't there room for all the water in the bottle? Guide students to understand that the bottle is filled with air and then direct the student's attention to the clay. Ask students, why did I put clay around the rim of the bottle? What do you think the clay is doing? Some students may realize that the clay is keeping the air in the bottle from escaping. Tell students that you are going to poke a hole in the clay and hold a sheet of tissue paper near the neck of the bottle so that students can see the tissue paper move when the air escapes. Then poke a hole in the clay with a pencil and ask students, what happened to the air in the bottle? The students should observe that when you poked a hole in the clay, the rest of the water flowed into the bottle. Students may also point to the tissue paper fluttering as evidence that air escaped. To summarize student responses, ask, why did the water suddenly flow into the bottle after I poked a hole in the clay? A student should understand that the water could not flow initially because the bottle was filled with air. But when a hole was poked in the clay, the air was pushed out as the water flowed into the bottle. Next, give each team a paper bag and tell them to open the bag and ask, what is in your bag? Some students may say the bag is empty. Others may surmise that the bag is filled with air. Instruct each team to blow into the bag, twist it, and hold the bag closed. Ask students, what happens to the bag when you blow into it? What are you putting into the bag when you blow it up? Students should have observed that the bag gets bigger as they fill it with air. Encourage students to name some properties of air. For example, air, like water, changes shape depending on its container. Similarly, air, like water, can move easily or flow. Demonstrate this by opening the bag and pressing down on the top of the bag so that the air flows out of the bag. Identify the air as a gas and encourage students to think of other gases such as the helium in a balloon or carbon dioxide in soda. Explain to the class that helium, carbon dioxide, and air are gases and therefore have similar properties. Lead students to conclude that all gases move easily take the shape of their container, are colorless, and cannot be seen.
add these common properties to the describing properties chart under the heading properties of gases. Finally, distribute a copy of activity sheet 9 to each student and ask, which of the drawings show things that contain a gas? Students should respond that the hot air balloon, the tire, the balloon, the can of soda, the empty jar, and the scuba diver's tank all contain gases. To conclude the activity, store the clay in a resealable plastic bag, discard the paper bags, and return all materials to the kit. Make sure to leave the chart on display for activity 12. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the science reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.